Here is Dr. John Lister, NHS researcher, speaking on behalf of the London Health Emergency. Good evening. This is uh, my chance to put this book into three-minute contribution. You can read the rest of it at the back afterwards, if you wish. Uh, my, own, my only trailer tonight. Um, don't mention the NHS, uh, was the advice from the Tory spin doctor, uh, Linton Crosby, uh, to David Cameron. It sounds about as ridiculous as uh, John Cleese in 40 Towers warning the staff, <laughs> working with German guests, don't mention the war. And then, of course, he said, I did, but I think I got away with it. <laughs> Let's make sure Cameron doesn't get away with it. Five years ago, it all seemed very different. Andrew Lansley and David Cameron thought they'd turned the tables on Labour. They were staging photo calls outside threatened hospitals, prom promising a moratorium on closures, annual increases in real terms NHS spending, and no more top-down reorganisation. But what did they do? They gave us a fleeting few weeks of a moratorium before closure plans resumed. Driven by a five-year spending freeze, the meanest five years for funding the NHS has ever faced. At the centre of the freeze was a pay freeze for NHS staff that has cost professional staff upwards of 16% of their pay in real terms since 2010, and they wonder why there are staff shortages. And what about the promise of no more top-down reorganisation? They've inflicted the biggest ever upheaval on the NHS, effectively breaking it up as a national service floating it free of parliamentary control and opening it up to privatisation on an unparalleled level. Yes, Thatcher put support services like hospital cleaning out to tender in the 1980s and brought in the internal market. Yes, Tony Blair brought in some market and competition and privatisation during his period from 2000, but alongside some investment which actually increased NHS staff. Both were wrong. But here we have Section 75 of Andrew Lansley's Health and Social Care Act, which was described by Chief Executive of the NHS, David Nicholson, as a reform so big it was visible from space. <laughs> this Section 75 forces 211 clinical commissioning groups to open up more and more services to competition and privatisation, while NHS budgets have been frozen. It's been estimated each CCG could be required to put between 60 and 600 services out to tender. Each tender carries huge bureaucratic costs, including costly lawyers, management consultants, McKinsey's, of course, have almost run out of staff to deal with all the contracts they have. <laughs> and not one of them add one iota to patient care. So what are the Tories saying now? They're promising a total of £8 billion extra by 2021, except it doesn't seem to quite add up. But even if they paid up, it's not enough after their freeze for five years, especially when they're still wasting £10 billion a year on a competitive market system that nobody wanted. And who believes they would pay up? Linton Crosby knows his stuff. The Tories have got plenty to keep quiet about. The party that can't find a speaker to defend its own record on welfare cuts on Newsnight the other night has clearly shown us what they will do over the last five years, what they would do to the NHS if they got another term. For a patient, a parent, a concerned member of the public or a health worker to give them another five years would be like turkeys voting for Christmas. We're, we're all here. We're all here because we want our NHS back. We want it reinstated as a public service. We want those values restored at the centre of the NHS. That means chucking this lot out. Whoever you vote for, vote for the NHS.